Thanksgiving Day Parade, it wasn't worth nothing. You didn't miss anything. I'm kind of getting like my daddy said, well, you seen one parade, you seen them all. You know, I'm kind of <laughs> getting to that age, I guess. Uh, nothing impressed me in that sense of the word, but it was all about partying and, and you know, it just seemed like they had a, a, a celebratory atmosphere and they was all excited and stuff and they were singing songs that uh, were 
partying and looking forward to Christmas, but they didn't have, they didn't even call it Christmas. They don't even, don't even know what they're looking for. They don't even know what they have. They don't even know what, what, what to, to have a celebration over. They don't have a clue as to what it's about. I, I've heard many of them talk about, you know, how many times have we heard over the last week people saying, well, I, I've heard people that are saying I'm thankful and they're atheistic in their ways and in their means and in, in how they believe. They don't believe God's word. They don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. There they, have been some that have been saved that have backslidden that I've heard even this week. They, they've doubted what God could do, but they say they're thankful. And, and I told Pam about one in particular, and I said, you know what? I said, that's, that's the craziest thing I've said. Who in the world are they going to be thankful to? Who in the world are they going to be thankful about? What do they got to be thankful if they don't know the Christ, the Son of God? What are they going to do without Him? What are they going to do without God? And in this series that I'm talking about, you know, there's there's movies that are out there that you're getting, some people will watch and some people won't. I, I, I just can't take with certain ones. I like some of the old movies, you know, about Christmas. They're, they're kind of uh, my favorite. Uh, but these the days stuff they got today, they ain't Christmas movies to me. Uh, uh, it, but they got movies, they're out there in abundance. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but they have a title in there, something about saving Christmas. You know, the dog that saved Christmas, you know, the cat that saved Christmas, the train that saved Christmas, you know, whatever it is, they got something to save Christmas. But they don't talk about the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to this world to die for our sins. They don't talk about him. They don't talk about the real reason we got to celebrate. So in this discovering Christmas, I, I don't want this to be just little cute stories and little cute things to get us in a Christmas spirit. I don't want to be the Christmas spirit that the world's got. I want Jesus this morning. I want him and his power. I want him and his anointing. I want him and his spirit. I, I, he's the only reason that we've got anything to worship. He's the only thing that we've got anything to celebrate. He's the only thing that we've got anything to be joyful about. This is, you know, you, you can do all the one. I'm not against decorating and all that stuff. I, I'm for it. I like it. But we are to be having our minds and our hearts worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ in this time. Never before have we had a time where we are to be rejoicing and praising God. And so I want to take this back to the beginning. You know, we, we're discovering Christmas, discovering what it means to worship, discovering what it means to praise our God for what he has done. Scripture tells us, you know, I, I like what John did. John goes, he, you know, whether I believe the Spirit, uh, I believe the divine, the Holy Ghost is in, divinely inspired uh, John to write this, and he has the, the, the same three words. Uh, that the Genesis starts with in Genesis chapter 1 in the beginning uh, Jesus was in the beginning John was letting you know and letting me know uh, that through the power of the spirit he was there and letting us know in the beginning in John chapter uh, just excuse me Genesis chapter 1 it says God created the heaven and the earth and then in verse 26, if you wanted to jump down, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish and of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. It says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him Male and female created he them. Very going back to the beginning of creation. Christmas has its origins in the beginning of the foundation. And you will say, well, how is this possible? How, how does this take place? Because it was all God's plan for Christ to come. It was all the Lord's planning for Christ to come and, 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 and save us from our sins. We look at from verse 3 in John uh, chapter 1, we find that Jesus was there. And it says, and without him, there was nothing made that was made. You know, the, the, you, could, you, you know, uh, nowadays, if, if we saw somebody talking like that, we'd say they got a problem. Well, maybe not. It's, it's probably well, that's their personal pronouns. They want to be an I, you know. <laughs> not, not a me, but an I, you know. But it says, 
They said, let us make man in our image. In, in our image. It, it's the plurality of God. Uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the scripture, John bears out, he says, there wasn't anything made that was made without Jesus being right in the middle of it. He was right there touching and ministering, right in the middle of everything. He was right there with God the Father and right there with God the Spirit. We look at this this morning. Uh, Toby Morgan wrote this, and I, I found it kind of uh, neat, I guess the way he put it. I, I'll say it that way. He says, uh, he wrote that there's people that might not understand the Trinity uh, or God's existence. But he said, but with these two scriptures, God introduces us to who he is. He went on to say, since when was human reasoning, since when has human reasoning become the measuring rod by which the truth of God is judged? You know, isn't that something? How come the little intellect, this thing that sits between our ears, this thing that can go off the rails at times, this thing that, that, that can not think of what they're supposed to think of when they need to think of it, you know you know what I'm talking about. These things that sit between our ears, and, and, and Brother Joe talked about it this morning. You know, my mama used to say there was times I had muddy water in my head, you know. I can't say I disagree with her time sometimes. But we think that our intellect, we think that our, our, our human intelligence is, is as good as it can be. Uh, it, it, we think that with our intelligence, we can judge how God wanted to introduce the, us to him. We think that we can judge God's word and pick apart what we think is right, what we think is wrong, and, and what we think. Who give us the, the power? Who give us the authority that we can question God and think that we know more than God? Our, our intellect and our reasoning. And do they not know, as Brother Kobe brought out this morning, do they not know that everything that we have, all the wisdom we've acquired, all the intelligence for technology and all the things that we have is from the wisdom of Almighty God. Because I tell you this morning, the devil can't create anything. He just likes to, dis, to, to flip it around and turn it for his own values, which ain't much. This morning, God lets us know through the prophet Isaiah in, in chapter 55, verse 8 and 9, he said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's plan, God's thinking is far extended above everything that we could ever imagine in this earth. Everything that we could ever come up with in this earth. God already has been way past that from the from day one. He was way past that before it took us. What, what are we now? Some close to 6,000 years this earth has been created and yet we are still uh, have problems. We still have breakdowns. We still have trouble. We can't even go to the doctor anymore. We have to tell the doctor sometimes what's wrong and how to fix ourselves sometimes because they don't know anymore. Why is that? Part of it is I don't think they know as much as them old doctors because they're all specialized. They only know one area of the body. Maybe I'm just knocking on doctors today. I don't know. <laughs> God gave us all wisdom. He gave us all the, the knowledge. It's all through him that we have what we have. <coughs> many don't acknowledge that. Many would rather not say anything about that. They'd rather use it for their own good. Jesus even went to say, as far as the beginning goes, Jesus said unto them in John chapter 8 and verse 58, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, he said, I am. Before Abraham was even a thought, Jesus already was. The Son of God, he was there before all of that. And, and I was thinking about this in, in relation to Christmas. You know, before before we ever get the, the, the decorations up, before we ever uh, get the uh, uh, 
the, the presence bought. And before we ever get the presence under the tree, there's a thought. There's a, there's some planning. There's some, you, you know, maybe your planning is to let your wife do all the shopping. I don't know. Maybe your plan is to wait till December the 24th and buy all that you need to buy. Then that's, that's your plan. But you start with the plan. And God had a plan for us this morning. God had a plan that for all eternity, he had a plan that we might be saved. From the beginning, from the foundation, before it all started, before it was spoken to existence, before there was water upon the earth, before the, the, the anything was formed that was on it, before the dry land appeared, before the, the fish and the, the fowl that came into existence, before any of it was upon the earth, before any beast of the field, as the Bible calls it, the King James, uh, before there was a cow, before there was a, a, a bison or buffalo, whatever you want to call it, before there was any of these things, the horse up on the land, God had a plan to save you and I. Before he ever formed Adam out of, the, out of the dust of the clay, before he breathed in him the breath of life, God had a plan to save us, to redeem us back to him. The second point I want to make to you is do you believe? Do we really believe Friend, I'm here to tell you that, that we, can, we can get caught up in the world's society and the world's thinking and the world's mindset and we can be drawn away from God if we're not careful. In the hour that we're living in, like Brother Kobe mentioned this morning, and with technology, it's so easily to get distracted. It's so easily to lose time. It's so easy to get caught up in things that make no, no, no eternal value in our soul. They don't touch us. They don't help us in our day-to-day -day walk. But we need the Lord. Do you believe? I was reminded of the story of Paul when he told, told a, was able to tell his story in front of King Agrippa. And after he gets done telling it, here's what King Agrippa says, and you probably know the story. But Paul said, King Agrippa, believe thou the prophets. He said, I know that thou believe. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost do you persuade me to be a Christian. He said, almost do you persuade me to be a Christian. Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am. Paul is saying, I am convinced that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. I have no hesitation. I have no doubt. I have no other thing that's by guard my mind. And I know for a fact he is the Son of God. And the only thing that I wouldn't wish upon you was these chains that are around my arms and around my legs. That that's the only thing that I don't want you to have. But I wish you were almost and altogether persuaded that Jesus is the Christ. I would that this morning I wish that there were Americans across this globe. But that, you know, I, I, we saw some, the, talk about football games, we saw some football games and people were all packed in these stadiums. And I would this morning that every house of God was filled with people that come to worship the Lord and praise God that they can get out at the, at the football games. I saw one, I, I believe it was Michigan, I think it was, and I looked at the, the, the temperature that for the, for the game time as a high of 36, and I, here's a guy out there without no shirt on. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Dedicated fan, dedicated worshiper of Michigan football. But where this morning are the worshipers of the Lord Jesus Christ? Who from the beginning of all foundations of the earth, before anything was formed, had a plan for every one of us. Oh, I would that all of those that were crying out at the football games the other day, I would that they were here this morning. I would that they were in every house of worship and their praise was lifted up to the Lord and, and their praise was for shouting glories to, his, to his, his excellency this morning because he deserves it all this morning. Toby Morgan wrote, if you subscribe to the idea that Jesus is a made up figure, someone who never lived. He said, get your head out of the sand and look at the history of Jesus. He said, there is as much, if not more historical written about Jesus that he lived than there is for George Washington. 
and probably more. He continues, said, you're free to believe crusty old men and young skeptics who would not know God if he shook them out of bed. You can align yourself with the denunciation of clerics and critics who would not know Jesus if he handed them a gift on Christmas morning. But he said, ask for me. He said, I choose to believe the testimony of men and women who live with Jesus. Man, even Paul, who was, he said, I was born out of one, as one that was born out of due season. He never got to see Jesus while he was here. He'd done send it back to the Father. But that day on the Damascus Road, he came down and he had a, an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. He had an experience that changed in that day. And just like Paul, you and I may have never laid eyes upon Jesus. But one day, thank God, we had an experience with the Lord that changed our hearts. Uh, Jesus came in. The Spirit came in and moved us and caused us to be changed. Uh, we were forgiven of our sins. We were changed by the mighty power of God. We no longer wanted the things we used to have and desire. We wanted the Lord. We wanted His love. We felt the forgiveness of sin. We was able to lay our heads down and up on a pillow at night in peace knowing that we were saved. Whether we leave this world tonight or we leave it tomorrow or we leave it when the rapture takes place. Uh, praise God. We can thank God that we know Him and when we leave this whole earth, we'll see Him. That's an assurity that you and I have in being Christians this morning. Oh, that the world would be able to be that convinced just as Paul was, just as you and I are this morning that, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. But doesn't Agrippa's words sound all too familiar in this world today? People say it defies logic. It doesn't make any sense. Why would God do it that way? How can you know for sure? God is a God of love. You know, he's going to love me regardless of what I do or where I'm at. I ain't going to worry about it. You need to worry about it. God tells us how to get to him through the word. Some say we're all brothers and sisters in this world. Some say we're all trying to reach heaven. No matter which way and which road you take. But we all know that's not true. There are many ways to God, they tell us. But we also know that ain't true. They ask us where was God in this or that situation. Or if God would just speak to me. My goodness gracious people. Don't they realize he already has. If God would just speak to me and, and give me a sign and tell me. That's the other thing. Can you give me a sign Lord? Then they get to this point. You believe your way and I'll believe mine. And they're defined. And I, I'm not believing my way. You're not believing your way. You're believing God's way. Amen. That's what we got to do. That's the problem. People say, you believe your way and I believe my Well, I ain't believing my way. I'm believing God's way. If I was believing my way, I'd come up with some crazy idea like everybody else in the world to get to heaven with. I believe God's way. My point this morning, and do you believe, and asking us, do we believe, is Satan has powers of delusion, powers of deception. If we don't walk closely to the Lord, we too might get off the right path. It's as simple as that. You may think, well, I'd I, I never go that direction. I'd never walk that way. I'd I never walk, walk away from God's truth or, or what is known that we've known for all our lives or what we've been preached and taught our whole life. I'd never walk away from that. You'd be surprised how many people have walked away. You'd be surprised how many people are, are, are living active lifestyles and in sin and they still think I'm blessed I'm okay I'm all right you know you know you're not okay you're not all right and until the sins underneath the blood until the sins repented of till you turn back to the Lord you're not okay you're walking on dangerous ground 
The word of God has to be our ultimate authority. Jesus showed us in the wilderness of the temptation that, that he went through in Matthew chapter 4. The devil tried to take the scripture and twist it around. The devil tried to take the scripture and use it for his benefit. But what did Jesus do? He answered him every time. It is written. There's people out there that take the word of God and twist it. Turn it for their own convenience. Turn it for their own will. Turn it for their own ways. I've seen, I don't know if you heard, there was a preacher that I've talked to you about. I mentioned he was a Pentecostal preacher. Surely had actually been to his church out in Oklahoma. He got on this kick all of a sudden that there was no hell. He preached hell. Listen to me this morning. He preached hell. He preached the word of God like we believe it. He preached the word of God in truth and in power and in anointing of the Holy Ghost. But I heard him on several interviews and this is what the words he said. He said, you know, I couldn't get my mind to reconcile the fact that a loving God would send people to hell for all eternity. He said, I might have couldn't re uh, reconcile it if, you know, if it was for crimes committed or a certain amount of time. But he said, I couldn't wrap my mind that a loving God would, would do that. So he determined in his mind that there was no eternal hell, that hell was here. Listen to what I'm saying. It's the same thing as if, if I had a, if I come up to you this morning and I started sputtering the same thing, it would be no different is what I'm trying to say. He was a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He knew the word of God. He preached hell. He preached it hot at one time, but something changed. I don't know why he got off or where he got off, but somewhere along the line, his relationship with the Lord had to cool somewhat to get to the place to where he would be deceived in that fashion. What am I telling you this morning? You've got to walk close to God. You've got to stay in his word. If you want to make it this morning, the devil has powers and, and God will help you if you call out to him. But you cannot walk away from God and expect God to just keep blessing you. Keep pouring out his spirit upon you if you walk away from God. And I thought that man, tragically, he had cancer and passed away last week or the week before last and, and, and Shirley had texted me and she said how sad said I hope he got things right with God I do too I pray that he knew he was dying and he asked for forgiveness I, I pray that somehow he got things right before he went into eternity and I'm thinking how in the world how in the world can people do that? The powers of Satan are strong if we don't walk in the Word. If you think that, you, that you're going to make it this morning, you're going to make it by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, you will. If you stay true to Him, if you walk with Him, you say, well, I, I, just, I don't know that if i if I got to make it like that, I can't make it. You can make it with Jesus. If you got to repent every hour, you can make it. You can make it in Jesus. If old timers can make it, we can make it. Amen. If those gone before us can make it, we can make it. Jesus made a way. It's not a hard way. That's the thing that the world says it's a hard way. The people that are trying to please the God and the devil say it's a hard way. But it's not a hard way. It's God's way. It's an easy way. The scripture tells us in Acts chapter 1 verse 3 says, To him to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom. Jesus is alive and well. I'm here to tell you this morning. If we don't believe this morning, if we if we don't have our mind fixed on Jesus, you know. I don't, I don't see anything with, with Christmas that I can be happy about. 
I really don't. You say, you, you don't like the lights and decorations? And all. Yeah, I like all that stuff. You don't like Christmas music? I love Christmas music. It's great. It's wonderful. But who I love more is Jesus. Who I love more. He made a difference in my life. He's changed my life for the good, for the better. Without him, I couldn't make it. Without him, I, I wouldn't want to live in this old world. Without him, I, I don't know where I would be in this old world. Jesus sent word to John the Baptist to tell people who he was. And tell John the Baptist who he was. Jesus answered and said unto, to, unto them, Go and show John again the things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Jesus told uh, many of these, these I am sayings that he said. Uh, he made the following declarations in John 6 and 35. He said, I am the bread of life. In John 8 and 12, he said, I am the light of the world. In John 10 and 7, he said, I am the door of the sheep. He said in John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Amen. Uh, he said in John 11, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm here to tell you that the Lord is who his name is. Jesus is the Savior of the world. In John 14 and 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He goes on to say that no man can come to the Father but by him, by Jesus Christ, the Son alone. You ain't going to get there to him by Mohammed. You're not going to get there to him by, by, by Buddha. It's not going to happen in any situation that you go through, you can be following whoever you want to follow in this world, but they're not going to get you past the, the gates of heaven. They're not going to get you there. The only one is true, and by the blood of Jesus Christ, in Him alone are we going to stand before the Father one of these days. Jesus said in John 15 and 1, He said, I am the true vine. Glory to God this morning. Do we realize who we serve? Do we recognize? Do we believe this morning? Uh, you know, uh, that there's, that there's signs that we see in this time of year. You know, uh, uh, it's sad to say, uh, but they, they got, you know, I believe. You ever seen that yet? Or believe, you know, for the holidays? They ain't talking about Jesus. I wish they were. They need to be. You know, they still want to go back and they want to believe in Magic. They want to believe in Santa Claus. They want to believe in reindeer. They want to believe in everybody come by, yeah, have a good time, all that stuff. They want to have a, a, a just a worldly occasion to celebrate. But without Christ, it's off kilter. Without Jesus, you, you do whatever you want to, it doesn't make a difference. It's an empty shell of an experience. But with Christ, he makes the difference. Let's get to the heart of the matter, the last point that I want to make to you this morning. Scripture tells us in Galatians 4, it says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. David Jeremiah wrote, figuratively speaking, God's calendar had a day with a big star on it. When the time was right for Christ to be sent forth in this earth, God already had a plan. God already had a moment. You know, this morning, I believe there's another, there's several other stars that God's got on his calendar that are marked. There's a time that God the Father is going to say, Son, it's time to go get your children. He's going to say it's time. Not, not tomorrow, not next day, but right now, go get them. And Jesus is going to come. Just like that, just that quickly. We're in the hours, the seconds, if you will, of the last 
the hours, I believe, the, of, the, of the coming of the Lord, I believe, is so close. Looking at what happened our past election and looking what could happen this coming year, who knows what's going to happen in the election. But don't look for the world to right itself over an election. Don't look for things to all get rosy just because of an election because it's not. Because you see, I think we've seen the anti-Christ spirit that has been fighting and raging against every person in this world. We saw it take place. We saw it shape. We saw it form. We saw its ugly head is rearing up. And it's in the world today. Who in their right mind would have thought our college campuses, some of which were founded upon Christian principles, although they don't want to deny that. Who would have thought that they would be standing and yelling for Hamas, Palestine? And I read something, I saw a sign on one news site, and I thought, my goodness. You just kind of shake your head after a while. You don't know what else to do. But on a college campus, they had a big old sign outside that said, you know, free Palestine. When Palestine gets their rights, trans people will get their rights. <laughs> what? That's insane. That's crazy. And if they knew for really the Palestinians, the it would probably kill all the trans people if we really knew what was going on. But they don't have a clue. They don't know. And worse than that, they don't know God. They don't know Jesus. Back to John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, In the, in the light that shines in darkness, and the darkness did not com comprehend it, Toby Morgan had shared two thoughts that is used here. He said, first, it can be mean that darkness of Satan could not seize or overpower the light of Christ. I believe that this morning, don't you? I love that this morning. He said, in other words, he said, the light now shines and, and, and Satan can't stop it from having its desired effect. Darkness cannot prevail against it. The light of Christ is around the world. He's still here. The light of Jesus is still in our faces. The light of Jesus, the joy of the Lord is still with the Christian people this morning. And the devil can't do anything about it. Comprehend the second point could be he, it's viewed as the idea that darkness cannot understand light. It may try to figure it out, but it cannot grasp how it works. But like this, what caused Legion to be sitting and clothed and in his right mind at the feet of Jesus? What can cause a drunkard or a drug addict to have their right mind and be sober? It's Jesus. What can cause a sinner that is filthy and, and, and black with sin to be changed and, and have a whole new outlook and have a want to do things that were right in God's eyes and want to follow Christ. What can do that? It's the blood of Jesus. I'm here to tell you this morning. It is the power of Jesus to change us. It can't be understood. I don't know about you. I, I thought about one instance in particular. I, I remember we were at a singing. I can't remember if we sung there that night or or if we did. We was over at Sunnyside Pentecostal Hall in the church and uh, and Brother Board, you know, uh, had us, we was there, and I, I remember there was a man that come in the, the back of the church, and, you know, I thought, well, this is odd. He, he didn't have no shirt on. He just come in, he was drunk. He was drunk as he could be. Now, I remember that man coming up, and he went to the altar, and the people didn't say, look at him and say, well, you know, he, well, he could have come to the altar with that shirt on, you know. No, nobody said that. They just gathered around and prayed with the man. Drunk as he was, he got up sober and saved. That's the power of God. 
that don't make any sense, does it? Could you imagine if, if on the outside there was a police officer who took his breath and did a breathalyzer on him and he said, you drunk, man. You're going to be arrested. But could, then could you imagine when the man walked back outside and did the breathalyzer again? Can't even tell there's any effects on you. There wasn't that night. I'm just saying, could you imagine? God changed that man in a moment's time. It's hard for us to understand. It's hard for us to comprehend. Discovering Christmas starts with knowing Jesus as our Savior. Putting him first in our life. Recognizing that he made the way that we could absolutely and without a doubt know him. Without a doubt that we know Jesus is the Son of God. I'm here to tell you the devil's been fighting the church. The devil, if he don't fight you, he, he fights me. He fights the church. He tries to wear them out. He tries to get them to doubt. He tries to ask them where their God is. He tries to say, well, what's happening now? Why is it God moving? Why is it God touching? Why is it God ministering? He tries to wear us out someday. But we have got to know that Jesus is alive and well. And we've got to tell the devil it's time to get off because I'm going to trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. As Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We've got to put the devil on notice. If you want God to move in situations, we've got to put the devil on notice and let the, him and the world know that we're going to trust in the Lord Jesus and he's made a way into my heart. He's changed my life. He's changed me to be who I, I, I never thought I could be. And I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. My sins are underneath the blood and I'm walking with Jesus and if he comes back tomorrow or if I die tomorrow I'm going to be alright because this old world will hold anything for me and don't be sad when I'm gone because if I go before Christmas I'll have the, the best Christmas of my life in the presence of the Lord Luke tells us this, chapter 2, verse 6. It says, so it was while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I love this, what Charles Spurgeon wrote. He said, he, Jesus, has not been a secret and a silent person until his birth in Bethlehem. That newborn child has worked wonders long before now. That infant slumbering in his mother's arms was the infant of the day, but he was also the ancient of eternity. If we want to have the, you know, a, The world looks for the best Christmas they've ever had. Do they not? They decorate. As next time, it seems like the next year, they try to decorate a little bit more. They have competitions. They have parades. They have movies. All about Christmas. And if you watch the Hallmark Channel, forgive me, but they're all the same, but they're different. Right? But none of them have Christmas. Christ, born of a virgin, come to redeem us, coming again. 